guys welcome back to Reyes creations and I have so much information for you guys like she's done the worth gown is done it's 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 right there um, it took me a year to do this dress um, because you know I had life things happen and um, I still have to finish filming the reveal. I've already picked out the place, but right now it is really hot in Texas. Like this weekend, this last weekend we hit 106 and it felt like 110 outside. And there's no way I'm going to run around in all those layers in that thing and, you know, melt. <laughs> However, I do have some new studio updates. I just got my very own me-sized dress form. I'm so excited. I just recently followed the Closet Historian's wrap dress tutorial and I made this. And I'm very excited to um, try it out on some beach trips, you know, once I'm not, you know, going crazy with things. However, let's get into it. This is going to be a three part video because the original video was about an hour and a half long and that's with me speeding everything up. So this first section is draping, drafting, and failures because I personally believe that the greatest lesson in life to learn is to fail and fail often and learn from those mistakes because that's like the definition of madness, right? Is to continue repeating doing the very same thing and expecting different results. However, in sewing that is the opposite you can continue doing the very same thing and learning from everything until you change that one thing and it turns out amazingly perfect. So let's do this. Right, so here I am pattern blocking this dress form. And no, I did not make a corset cover for this dress. I probably should, but I wasn't sure like just how floofy it is because Edwardian dresses are pretty floofy. And, you know, this dress is not very foofy in the bust or anywhere, really. I was definitely, you know, freaking out, but I was trying my best. So I basically draped a bunch of fabric over this, a big, you know, like a big square, essentially. And I took it in with pins and drew all over it. And I'm cutting away all the excess in this clip right here. And I'm, I'm very terribly excited. And, you know, I'm just trying to, to focus on making sure that I got at least one half of this bodice looking okay. And, you know, I'm pretty pleased with that. And uh, now we're going to pop on over to me tracing all these pattern pieces out. So the thing with doing a draping method like this is that your first draping pattern is not ever, ever going to be 100% perfect. Ever ever. You're probably going to do this stage a few times and just constantly correcting the pattern. And like, this is just the beginning of this kind of process. And it mostly worked for me, but what I was looking to do here was to basically make a base and something that I could jump off of and kind of correct it. Now I could have bought a truly Victorian pattern and, uh, worked from there, but I just didn't think that that was going to really, really work out for me in the long run. And, um, you know, I've had all these pictures from the Met Museum, but this is a kind of a complicated dress because there's a lot of draping with Worth gowns. You wouldn't think so, but there is absolutely no way that you could make a Worth gown without draping the bodice. And I think that's like one of the reasons why they were so famous in the Edwardian period. And I'm quite busty. And, you know, especially with the bust improver on this, this outfit. And, you know, I was just trying to figure it out. And it's definitely, definitely an interesting, interesting project for sure. And um, I was just very, 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 very much struggling. And I was, you know, trying to figure it all out as I, as I went, because I'm, it's definitely freaking out and you'll see like a clip in the future on this video of me just going oh gosh why and you can like hear the stress in my voice of just like oh great is this going to end up being one of those unfinished projects that just gets put in the bin and forgotten about as like your everlasting permanent shame and I was really hoping that that wasn't the case but 
the worth count is done and it is gorgeous and it is beautiful and I am proud of myself like I love my dress and I have nowhere to wear it at the moment and uh, hopefully it's hopefully somewhere soon I can do that and I'm pretty excited like just to put it on and swan around because you know I have that beautiful skirt and the dust ruffle on there and I was just absolutely thrilled but it took a while to like just kind of break down and and do the thing like I've never been so intimidated by a project and there's very few projects that I've been intimidated by and this was one of them the other is my blue sack back dress that I have to entirely resize because you know I lost weight and now I have a fancy new dress form that should definitely help me make sure I get the best possible fit the best possible draping the best possible everything and so here is my fail number one because my two mock-ups just weren't working for me I tried the whole like taping it on like paper but you know paper doesn't really work like fabric does and it's great for like those 3d projects like that you really need a lot of structure and paper will do that and so I tried a different method I was like okay well this bodice doesn't have any stretch in it so maybe I need to do like this Elizabethan drafting method. And so I tried this Elizabethan drafting method and it it worked, but it didn't work because I kept trying to reduce the waist and I kept trying to fix it. And then my mat, my non-functioning math brain just didn't want to, just didn't want to cooperate with me. And I was, I was really, really struggling on this. And so I tried this option. It wasn't the best. I don't recommend it. Just throw it away. Just throw this option around. Just if you're gonna do this Elizabethan draping method, keep it for Elizabethan things. <laughs> Cause it is not gonna work for an Edwardian at all. And it was just a process of trial and error because ultimately that's like what sewing's about, right? Trial and error, especially when you're you're first starting. And I was trying to basically fit a square peg into a round hole thinking, okay, well, I'm better at doing Elizabethan gowns. Maybe, maybe I should, you know, do uh, something else. And these are my hip curves, which are amazing, by the way, but I'm still trying to get the hang of using them. They made me buy all of this stuff at school, and I'm like, what do I do with it? And, you know, I, I kind of got the, the gist of those. Maybe not. I don't know, I'm just trying to true up some seams here, like some curves. Just, uh, just uh, didn't, didn't work for me. And here I am doing fail number three. It says fail two on the video, gosh. Oh, I'm terrible at video editing. Oh, and um, yeah, uh, <laughs> again, I tried this Elizabethan method again it didn't work for me and you know just try and do the whole let's just draw you know at some point I got like really exhausted and really tired and I, you know I feel like I was just banging my head against a brick wall it, it just wasn't a good time for me and I can tell you right now this doesn't work and I was trying to add two inches on the back because I realized it was two inches too small at the waist and what was I thinking? I was thinking, ultimately, that this would combine all of my crazy seams and for the, the silk part of this dress and that I wouldn't have to worry about it too much. Maybe I could just skip all the hoopla and just go straight on in and make less work for myself. But I was wrong. I was wrong. So wrong. Oh, it hurts my heart. Just don't try to cheese ball this project. Just don't. I, you know, I tried and it just, it, it like licked my face and said, I am yours. You know, do this the right way. And, you know, I tried. I, I really, really gave it a go. And, mm-mm, 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 no ma'am. Nope, 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 nope. Absolutely not. So we're just gonna watch me fail and continue on, you know, being a stubborn mule that I am. And uh, cut out a front, basically, you know, the front and the back twice. So I have a whole entire piece that I'm going to tape together and realize that I suck. And we need to have an alternate method of, you know, doing it the right way, the right method. Yeah. 
this is dis- I'm disappointed in myself watching this footage. I'm still going with fail too. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, it didn't really work out because I have a bust and a very small waist for this gown, and I'm like, yep, there it is, me pinching everything, trying to shove it all into the side, thinking I could maybe side seam this. No. No, I cannot. I cannot side seam this. At all. Just, just not gonna happen. Nope. I was like, yeah, maybe I'll just try to do it this way, but mm -mm. nope. <sighs> walk off and shame. <laughs> okay, so here is the very first pattern I worked with and I adjusted it. And this is what ultimately I ended up kind of going down with in the end. Um, this is a piece of cotill. No, actually, is it a cotill? No, it is not a cotill. This is, uh, looks like cotton duck. And... I basically did many, 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 many mock-ups of this and trying to make sure that my seams were where they needed to be because this, the original had two front seams that I kind of just merged into one. So like I didn't do it 100% accurate. This dress is not 100% accurate. Um, it was made with beading and rhinestones and before the Met put the whole zoom thing onto their feature for this dress, I interpreted the dark spots on the dress as sequins and beads because the rhinestones caught a glimpse of the camera and that's what was turning the rhinestones like black and like that's what I like that's why I thought they were beads and then like months later after I finished the the skirt I went ahead onto the website the Met Museum to do some research and realize I can zoom in. And when I did, like, the just sheer amount of disappointment in myself and everything else, like, ah, there's nothing wrong with asking questions, which is why I'm so glad I emailed the Met Museum and got a whole bunch of photos of the front and back of this dress. So here I am just sort of plotting out where the boning needs to go based off the photos I received. And there's on the original there's four actually but the way I sort of patterned this like I originally was going to go for four but I ended up going for three like one down the actual center front and then two on each side um, but this is just working out this pattern and you know trying not to literally be disappointed in myself that I didn't get it right the first time and you honestly you, you never really will um, the first time unless you've made like 5,000 worth dresses and you can do this like with the back of your hand so this is another mock-up and I'm gonna give it a go and see what's going on as with all my patterns I sort of just label it and write the date and what it is and hopefully I'm you know making little notes for myself and I work with a really small seam allowance, and here I'm just trying to do it the right way. Right bone, bone, that's a seam, that's a seam, and I'm going to line up my dart here, and then I'm going to go over it to get this beautiful, beautiful curve that I need, and then fold it, and then run this like like a it's like a sharp little pokey wheel but it leaves little holes that I can follow that give me the dart now the trick with darts is that you have to remember which direction you fold and I was trained in school to always press and fold my darts towards the center back never towards the center front but whichever method you choose to do just remember what direction you're going in because if I went the opposite direction I'd have a weird pulling and like the edges of those darts sticking out. It's like dart 101. <laughs> so I'm just adding seam allowance here and getting that going and making sure I don't mess up because at this point I'm just trying to be as precise as possible without, you know, you know losing my mind. And I have this cut on center front and the different seams. And I think I merged 
one of the side seam and the back seam together because I thought that was kind of useless and I axed completely another front dart out of or seam out of the front of the bodice here but this is definitely the one I was going for I just wanted to do a final mock-up of this under under form because we all know how important undergarments are with period costuming and if you don't you need to understand that foundation garments are 100% key to getting the silhouette that you are after, which is why we make corsets and petticoats and bustles and panniers and butt pillows, just all of that. So I have this all cut out and ready to go, just about cutting out my pattern. And then I'm going to swap it over to the fabric and give that a go and sew it up and try it on the dress form and see if that is something I absolutely need to do and that I like and see if I'm just overall happy with what I have going on here because sometimes it's just not perfect so here is some cotton duck I have quite a bit of it and I'm cutting the front bodice on the fold because that's where I have it marked I needed it all in one piece I could technically do it in two piece but I just don't feel like messing with extra seam allowances so there are some areas that I kind of cut corners with not too many, just a little bit. Um, it's definitely a exercise in patience because I was very, very nervous about this project. And, you know, like I, I keep repeating, I bit off more than I can chew. And sometimes I feel that way. I get a little too ambitious with projects. And I was like, man, is this... Is this really, really, really that ambitious or am I just intimidated? And I think it was a bit of both. Like, yes, it was an ambitious project. Was I intimidated? Absolutely. Would I do it again? Yes. Which worth gown would I choose? I don't know. I'm kind of into like worth American worth gowns because they're like interesting bits of culture with the Gilded Age. And oh my gosh, I did catch up on the Gilded Age. Like immediately when it came out, I was just watching it. I was like, oh, look at all these dresses. And they're talking about the asters and the skewer horns. And I was just kind of like geeking out. I had like my own little moment. You know, I should really do a review of, of the Gilded Age. And just for entertainment purposes, honestly, like what do I like and what don't I like? And like, why is this inaccurate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, the wheat worth gown is definitely towards the later part of the Gilded Age because the, the one that they're currently showing in the show is just very, very much like, you know, late bustle period because bustles actually got huge. Well, they sort of went from like the Civil War era with like the elliptical bustle and then they they were big so like all that fabric just kind of got shoved up towards the rear end and that's why they call it a bustle and then the lobster tail bustle which is a foundation garment got smaller and smaller and smaller until we got to the natural form and then when we hit the end of the natural form dresses started to become raised hems and it's it's really interesting progression on women's fashion honestly um, men's fashion hasn't changed too much but if we're talking about modern era fashion, it's definitely, I think everyone's just here for comfort or we're here for style. Like I really miss, I really miss like us just wearing clothing that's, you know, that's, we've taken some time to work on it. So when I patterned this bodice pattern, it was all curved seams. So now I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to sit at my machine and so I've lined up all of my my um, darts here like perfectly as then I sat there and took the time to stick my pins through each of the um, through each of the lines that I had created like individually did this it was definitely an interesting process so I'm just gonna sew this up and test it out and that will be very very soon and um, goodness gracious, we're, we're getting ready to make this. I don't know, are you guys excited as I am? I'm excited and I, I spent hours. I think this dress cost me like 300 hours worth of labor. It was a lot, <laughs> but I enjoyed every minute of it. Oh, 
including all my painful fingers from flower making. Oh my gosh, we need to talk about it. Okay, so this is the under pattern that I have going on, and I'm probably gonna make this out of something very, very light, but right now it has an inch, a half inch seam allowance on it, and I've pinned this lace that I had digitized off of the original that I drew. <laughs> so this is a thing. On the original, though, there's like this netting here, but I decided to go with like a white organza or chiffon. I think this is a chiffon, but it's slippery and it does not like me, and so I ironed it into submission. But we need to talk about this, okay? So this is obviously quite busty, especially if you're looking from the top down. And this is on the bias, and it has been stretched across, but the under pattern here has been taken in a lot, and there's like a curved seam, because big, small, big, small, big, small, big, small. And it's still like two inches too big, because the corset's a 28, and this dress form does not want to shrink anymore. I've tried. Anyway, so I've decided to get some scrap silk that I'm going to use for the cascading flowers and stretch it and see what happens. So this dress actually closes on the left hand side and how I know this is because I requested a bunch of photos from the Met Museum, like a shot in the dark, and they actually responded. So we have this length of, um, so we have this length of lace that goes down here and this side will actually have to come up a little bit more, like silk wise has to come up to meet this edge, which is hiding under there. Obviously my camera doesn't want to focus. Let's see, there we go, it's hiding. It's hiding under here, there it is. And then this part of the lace continues on and it actually hooks over here, so as the Met photos. So that's that's been interesting, but I'm assuming that this will tighten out more because there's three strips of boning that start from here and it goes straight down and then we have a strip of boning that starts underneath the bust like just under the bust and comes down and it like curves a little bit so I'm assuming that's spiral steel and the boning keeps going so it's like here some boning and then you turn it some more and then there's boning here and then there's boning here because this bodice laces up in the back and I'll have to put some more chiffon here and then lace up here it's it's intense and I didn't think that I could do this because I was struggling with the fact that this is there's no pleats in this dress in the front of this bodice like there's nothing there's no pleats there's no darts there's literally nothing and obviously I have a bigger bust than the original worth gown and so I'm working on this and I still have to point this. I just have this fabric like just draped on here and it's just like tucked underneath because I was stretching this fabric within an inch of its life, quite literally. And I figured I needed to share the process here. Now, it is going to be machine embroidered. So there's gonna be embroidery starting from basically the armpit and it's gonna come across and go down in this direction. And it's the same in the back so obviously we see it's going in this direction so literally the embroidery goes in this direction and it's going to be a challenge but i think i think i'm up for it and as you can see i kind of curved this a little bit but don't worry this scrap fabric is going to get used for cascading flowers because in one of the original photos we have all of these beautiful trailing handmade silk flowers that just trail down the dress off of the sleeves and that's what I'm really really interested in but I figured I'd just give you guys a quick update on how this is going <laughs> yay oh my gosh if you guys have made it this far congratulations thank you so much for sticking with me I know I'm a baby channel and like I have weird awkward pauses because my brain decides to die in the middle of a sentence and I'm still quite new to this and rather rather awkward rather awkward because you know the internet judges you <laughs> I hope to have part two up very very soon as I said there is an hour and 30 minutes of footage that I have to go through with more like left on my video camera plus I have to film the grand reveal so I'm hoping to have part two up very very soon and until then enjoy and thank you guys for stopping on by